Charlie mentioned, today we're going to be talking about an agreement that we have signed with Autism Speak and the AGREE Consortium about uh, presenting the data generated by the consortium in Nexus DB, allowing for research and clinical applications. Um, so the outline of the talk, first I would like to review the AGREE Consortium and the data set. Um, then I'll do a brief uh, review of Nexus copy number and Nexus DB repository. Uh, discuss the availability of the AGREE uh, data in Nexus DB and go through several use cases in a live presentation. The first one, and we can probably play by ear, um, it would be how to mine the AGREE data to find interesting knowledge. And this is uh, with respect to copy number data. Um, uh, or using agree data to validate other results. So if you're a researcher and you have your own data set uh, that you're looking at uh, autism or, or related conditions and you wanted to validate certain findings, how do you do that? Um, case three would be uh, how, to, how this uh, data could be uh, used for if, uh, if your lab is also looking at some clinical samples and uh, wanted to see if the indications match how you could do that. And then finally, um, how would you, if you're an AGREE member, how you would download and look at an individual sample if you do not have a copy of the software already. Okay, so to begin with, and I'll try to minimize the time I spent on the slide presentation so we can have more time. On the, on the live presentation. As Shani said, if there's any questions during the presentation, go ahead and type them in. Uh, I'll stop at the end of the, the PowerPoint just to see if Autism Genetic Resource Exchange. It is a nonprofit DNA repository uh, with the family registry. Uh, has uh, a very extensive phenotype information and um, as I will describe Below, there are 1,300 uh, well-characterized multiplex and simplex families available. Um, the genotypic data um, that we currently have in Nexus DB, and AGREE has processed these samples uh, a few years back uh, using the Illumina SNP arrays, as well as Affymetrix 5.0. Uh, the Affy 5.0 data set is being processed right now and should be up shortly. The, the Illumina data sets are available right now in Nexus DB. And the first set is 87 families, 290 total samples. So this includes the mother, father, and the, uh, and the children. Um, then another set has 108. And the, primarily the difference between the first one and the second one or the design of the, the Illumina half map 550 array. Uh, so the, the last two sets use the version 3 and the first one was the version 1. Um, this last one uh, has close to 4,000 samples, almost uh, 1,000 families. So that's the data, and, and what we have done at Biodiscovery is, um, uh, well, before getting there, let me just tell you about our Nexus copy number and Nexus DB. Um, Nexus copy number provides a number of capabilities. Uh, one of the capabilities is to detect copy number and allelic events, such as loss of uh, heterozygosity from microarray data, including SNP and ACGH, and if uh, some of the next-gen sequencing data that properly generates data, uh, Nexus can uh, load that in. So one of the things it does, it makes those types of measurements. Um, it allows you to collect and organize data in large projects with tens of thousands of samples locally on your own computer so you can and then visualize so it, it has an extensive uh, set of methods to interact with the data through visualization, um, to review a single sample or aggregating populations. And then finally, it has um, a number of statistical tools to be able to do population analysis. And I will show you some of those uh, today. Um, Nexus DB is a cloud-based repository. It's housed at the Amazon AWS and uh, allows uh, users to query uh, a region or an event across multiple projects. So what you would see today would be 
queries that expand not just the agree data, but the ISCA consortium data and other data sets, for example. And this happens very fast and it's off-site, so it doesn't take any resources from your local computer. Um, and you can create custom data access to allow collaborations, and that's what we have used here to establish the agree uh, group with the Nexus DB. Now, um, what is the data that we have in Nexus DB? So what we've done is take the, the, the data, everything except the, the older Affymetrics 10K array data, and process them with the Nexus copy number using the SNPFAST2 segmentation algorithm to make uh, calls. Um, and we've created a number of projects. Actually, I think that should say three. Uh, three projects varying in size from 290 to 30, almost 4,000 samples. And uh, this is in Nexus DB. So the data includes all the, the calls, the phenotype information, as well as the log R probe values. But we did not uh, upload the BLE frequency probes uh, due to just the privacy um, concerns. So uh, two groups have been created in Nexus DB. And uh, one group is called Agree. And the members of this group can, um, the data can be queried and downloaded uh, to the local copy of Nexus. And I'm a member of this group. And I'll show you how that works. There is another group called Agree Data Query Only, uh, which is open to anybody uh, who has a Nexus copy number or a Nexus DB account. And that they can issue a query and know if that event exists um, in, the, in the repository or not, but they cannot download the sample. So um, getting access to the database, if you are a member of the Agree Consortium, uh, you would need to request an Nexus DB account. If you don't have one, then you can do that through the software, and I'll show you how that's done. And then um, you can then request to join the Agree group within Nexus DB. Um, and what you need is you need an access key for doing that. And that can be uh, gotten from either us or through the Agree Consortium. Um, Non-members just need to have an Nexus DB account. And then you can join the Agree Data Query Only group. So you can query, just query that, that data set. OK. And that's the end of the presentation. I don't believe there are any questions. Um, so. I will, hopefully that wasn't too confusing, and I'll start with the live presentation. So I'm going to start. Um, this is the Nexus Copy Number Discovery Edition. And uh, before opening a project, let me just log into Nexus DB. So if you click on the, the login window, um, you will see this page. And just like many web pages, if you've forgotten your password, you can click this button. If you don't have an account, which might be the case for many of you, uh, you will click the register uh, account. You provide the information um, and click submit. Uh, within 24 hours, you will get an email about how to access, if you have a valid key, how to access there. Um, in my case, I do have an account. And I will log in using my password. Again, this the database is not locally here by Discovery or on my computer, but it's uh, on the Amazon site. So here's the Nexus DB tab. Um, the first tab is my project. So these are the projects that I have processed over the past uh, years. And uploaded to Nexus DB it shows me how much uh, data I have there. Um, what I want to show you are really the, the more interesting things are the visible projects. So the visible projects are projects that are not owned by me. Uh, they're owned by others. And you can see this column here. It says the owners. And it's visible to me because I am a member of one of these groups, and they have been made available to me. So if I sort it on the on the group column, you can see there are uh, three projects in here. These three that are um, the owner is uh, Dr. Kostanovich, um that are assigned to Agree and the Agree Data Query Only group, and these are the three data sets that I will be talking about. Um, if you mouse over, well, if you click on on a project, it will show you all the phenotype data that we have for that project. So here we have uh, control gender, flags, what values they have, diagnosis score, etc. These are 
the, the data summary for that project. Uh, there are 290 samples in this one. This one has 363, and this one has uh, 3780 uh, samples. Um, if you want to, so let me show you before we go further, if I want to show what, how to join a group. So these are the groups that I'm a member of. And as I said, um, in this case, I'm, I'm the owner of um, this data set, but anyone can join the Agree Data Group. The agree group up here, uh, Vlad is the owner, and this is a private group, so it requires an access key that you need to get. So if you want to join that that group, you won't. If you click the join group and you have the software, you will not see that listed here unless you provide the access key, and that's how you can you can request access to that group. But if I want to join this one, I will click that button and say join group, select it, and, and click. Well, sorry, I will click join groups, and I would find the agree data query only and click join. It doesn't show up here because I'm the owner, so it knows that I, I'm already belonging to that. Hopefully that was clear. So let's go back to, to the, the projects page. And anything in Nexus, when you see a blue light, that means you can and click on it and 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 some action happens. So if I click on, oops, I think I did that. Okay. Uh, so if I click on it, like I did before, it queries the the database, and you can see there should be about four thousand now individual samples here that are with the phenotypes that are available, like child, parent, etc. I think there's. Um, so we have encrypted the ID, so there is a by discovery agree ID. So if you're an agree member, the, the actual agree IDs are not here, but uh, there's a mapping table that you have that can map this over. So these samples, for example, well, it's like this family, this is a family, um, has four children and the two parents, that's the mother, this is the father. Um, so if, if for some reason I, I was interested in looking at this uh, set, I could select these guys. So I've selected these six samples. And um, I can download it into a project, um, of course. So first, before I can download, I need to have a project. So I can, if I'm working, let me start over. So if I already have a project, I can open that. Um, if not, you can create a project. So I'm going to create a webinar project, um, just something to show. And this is going to be a human and, and build 36.1. So since this data is currently uploaded in build 36.1, I need to have a project with the same build. We will re-upload this, reprocess this in the latest build 37 and make that available in case you're working with that. Um, type of data, so you can query and download Bill 37. So right now, what the software is doing is just making uh, the space on my computer for a pro for this project. All right. So now I can go back into Nexus DB and do what I showed you earlier. I mean, and. Uh, I think I was clicking on this 3,000 sample one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. So this is that project, and uh, yep. So I'm going to highlight these guys. I'm going to select them and click download. Um, it allows me to put a tag because we found that sometimes you get data from Nexus TV and you forgot why you got that data. Um, so you can put a little tag here, and I can say this is family um, 0084, and I was interested. That's why I selected that. So when I click OK, what's, as you can see, now I grabbed those samples and brought them down. So I just only grabbed six samples, um, not a lot. But if I go to the data set tab, in, now in the project, it's no longer empty. It has these six samples with the encrypted sample IDs from the database and the, the quality. 
now if I move my webinar panel a little bit. Um, also the quality of this array and there's a magic box here that you can put in and you can get information like the total number of calls in here, um, the database ID, the owner that it came down with, um, and then facts their visibility. So these are all the factors that are by default are not being uh, displayed, but now I can go ahead and display the family ID. Um, I'm not sure what that is, the uh, score. Um, you can put gender, the database tab, um, and the relationship maybe. So as I add that information, you can see, well, these uh, apparently all four um, female um, children have uh, autism or and then there, there's the father and the mother. Now, if I want to look at all of these samples together, I can select that and click view. Now, uh, if it's not clear, I have not looked at this data before myself uh, for this morning, so we can both see if there's anything useful here or not. Um, so what, what we see down here are, let's take one of the factors that, that I'm displaying that's of interest, um, let's maybe put the relationship. So the, the top two are the parents and the bottom are the children. I think in this case, um, this also affects the diagnosis as well. So these two are unknown or non-autistic, most likely, and these are autistic. Um, so if you have not looked at Nexus copy number um, screen, let me explain what you're looking at here. So this is the, the genome up here, and what, you, uh, what I'm mounting over is a, a frequency plot. So the percentage of aberrations. And down beneath, it tracks of, of genes, exons, known polymorphism, microRNAs into this project. Um, I can use, oh, and beneath that are the individual samples. So one thing I could do is, is for example, zoom into a particular area. Hmm. Um, and <laughs> this is kind of interesting. So, and, and um, look at, over here we got 66% or of the samples, um, two thirds of the samples have that deletion. And if you look at it, you can see it seems like it only happens in the children and not the parents. So this seems to be a very strange uh, de novo event. And now if I zoom in further, on, I can see the actual gene uh, that is being affected or, or hit. And what you see down here is the micro, uh, microRNA as well. Um, the, the red bar or the pink bar here denotes that this region has been found to be polymorphic in the database of genomic variants. So let me zoom further into that, that area. And if I click on the pink bar, it shows me all the reported uh, cases of normal CNVs and gain and losses in different publications. Uh, the one I like to look at is actually just the CNV bars. And you can see that there has been 27 losses, for example, reported in this publication. So there are 79 losses there. So it does seem to be a genomically unstable area. Um, but um, who knows? So right now, it seems like if I click on it, um, it will not show me probes because the first time the data gets downloaded, it doesn't have the probe information, but uh, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, so if I'm interested in what this uh, this FAM gene is, there's multiple ways of looking at it. I can click on this drill down, and it tells me about everything I see on the on the screen. So this gene is family with sequence similarity to something. So it's maybe a pseudo gene. There's a microRNA here. Um, so there are. It's an interesting area. Um, who knows what it does? I can click on that gene, and it will launch my browser and go to um, NCBI. And apparently, there's not much written on it. There seems to be a lot of, of SNPs uh, in, in the area as well. Um, so that's one way of, and you don't have to go to NCBI. You can right click and go to Ensemble or somewhere else. Um, but the thing that was 
interesting to me what, looking at this. I can change that. I mentioned earlier there's lots of ways to visualize. So one of the things is instead of looking at the samples individually, I can say factor aggregate. So that essentially combines based on the selected factor. Now I can see the frequency um, of the event. And, I, and if you look here, back to that area, the, the autism group, they all have this deletion, like 100% of them have that ones, and the unknown, the parents in this case, did not have it. So it, the software allows you to do this type of, of um, quick review. Um, before going farther, let me do one more thing. So let's take one of these samples that was of maybe interest uh, of the children. If I click on it, and I, it, let me say first, no, I'm not going to download uh, the data. What, what you would see is all the information about that sample, all the, the parameters, the phenotype data that's been there, uh, the overview tab shows you that, well, actually this is interesting, it has an amplification uh, on 10 over here. Um, so if I click there, I can see that region, but when you zoom in, you just see the segment. You don't see any probes in that area. And if you go to the whole genome, you just essentially see the segment. Now, if I click again, and this time say, yes, get me the, the probe information. Now, it downloads the probe level data as well from NexusDB. And um, I can go to this area, and, and now I click on that. You can see now we've got the probes. And I'll zoom in. And yeah, there's this area that has these guys way up there, and it's probably maps to DGV, um, yeah, 68 um, gains reported. So, um, and if we go to the whole genome, all the 550,000 probes were downloaded. I mentioned earlier that these are SNP arrays, so there's also a BLE frequency, but that data is not put into um, Nexus DB, but the calls are. So the areas where you see it might be hard to tell, but you see here is like a yellow, um, like that that area. So this is a copy neutral LOH. It's, it could be just the fact of the haplotypes that, that that region was inherited from both parents. So this, uh, if you had the BLE frequency, we would only see two bands in, in that area. So this is called uh, the sample drill down. I can look for various genes, and I'm more familiar with cancer genes. <laughs> well, let's try some on PARC2. So if I'm interested in that gene, I can type the name in, and it finds it over here on chromosome 6. And um, I can do all sorts of cool things with it. So um, that's one part I wanted to talk about. Let me go now into the Nexus DB again. And uh, if you look at this project that has the 363, um, I have actually downloaded that because it takes five minutes or so to download that project. I just downloaded it earlier and uh, poked around. So here's that project. It had 363 samples. And what I want to do is to show how this data could be used for research application. I briefly uh, showed you um, how that can be done uh, with a small example. But uh, here, I'm going to <clears throat> show all 363 samples. And um, we saw the, the, the various uh, cutouts. All right, so I'm going to do zoom in. So the frequency uh, here is is lower, so as far as the events. And you can see some areas, for example, on 6 here, um, that there is a lot of uh, changes, gains, and losses in both direction. And this is a very well-known um, polymorphism that's been reported many times, 291 losses, for example, there. Um, so one of the questions that, uh, oh, one thing I should show you. 
So what I'm showing up here is the, the events uh, of copy number gain and loss. I can change that and also show allelic events. So this is the profile. So what you're seeing down here are the peaks of areas of LOH. So for example, this is just one peak. Um, if I look at that region, there is a lot of uh, homozygosity in these samples. And in fact, if I click on the sort tool and click there, I can sort the samples that have the smallest uh, regions of uh, LOH and we set the limit to 500K and above. So, um, so you can see this is recurrent LOH and as, as I scoot down, this is one way of looking at it. I can change this. Maybe it will look more interesting like that, uh, which is better for publications. So this is a compact view. So you can see how that that regions of homozygosity in, in here for each individual sample uh, stacks together. Um, now what I can do is I can ask one one basic question might be is are there recurrent aberrations in in autistic uh, samples? So I can go back into my data set set and sort on the field where it says diagnosis score and pick everything that ASD or let's just pick just autism for now. Everything that's marked as autism and forget about this, everything else and select these guys. So there's, at the bottom it tells me there are 138 samples that have a diagnosis score ADI, which I'm not sure exactly what it means, uh, of 100 um, that are marked as autistic in the set. And now if I click view, that's the only set that I'm viewing. And this is the profile for the copy number, and this is the profile for the allelic event. Now, if I ask a question, well, let's, let's do one more thing. Um, I'm going to change, I'm going to filter out two things. I, I can filter out regions that are LOH because they're, they came with a copy number loss. So I'm looking only for copy number uh, neutral LOH regions. And then ignoring the small events, let's look at things that are at least uh, two megabase. So I'm going to filter the data set. And if I change the view, you can see that now it's a lot less as far as the regions of LOH. But we, we get some here, for example, um, that are, are larger areas. Now, I want to find, if I go to the aggregate tab, if my question is, what are areas that happen in the genome, events that happen in at least 15% of my uh, samples? Um, these are the regions. So, and um, these regions are, in this case, these are all lost. There's some that's gained, and there's a couple of LOH regions that are, are gained or lost with this frequency. And uh, you can see many of them are covered entirely but by known CNVs. Um, but let's just sort on this and pick the highest frequency. So this area on chromosome 11 uh, has four genes. And if you click on it, this is the olfactory area. This is the uh, genes um, that are very polymorphic. Um, I can look at it. I can right click and say, OK, let's go to that, that region. In, in the database. And then you can see, because I'm showing a little bit. So here's the, the losses. And if I sort the samples, these are all the, the deletions. So this is one thing I could do. Um, let me remove the filters and uh, ask another question. Well, let's go back to the data set tab and not just uh, the autism ones, but select everybody and view all the sets. But um, let's take the score. And as I showed you earlier, I can change this to create a factor aggregate view. So now I have 138 of the autistic samples. This is the profile. And the ones that are unknown. It's here, and these guys at the broad spectrum or not quite autism is this one, and ASD is that. Um, 
so it's very hard to identify regions that are different between these profiles. So what we have is a tool called uh, comparison. So I can compare uh, different groupings. And I created one, which is called, you know, I compare the unknown or basically not autistic to everybody else. Um, so if I click on details, it shows me there are 213, let's call it normal, and 150 affected samples. And if I click on the view button, um, it performs a Fisher exact test comparing the probabilities. And right now, the thresholds are such that I require 25%, which is for this data set of, is a lot. So I'm just going to change it to one. So these are the regions that are with a Fisher exact test of uh, less than p value 0.05 are different uh, between the two populations. So this loss, for example, on uh, chromosome 1 has one gene and a very tiny area. And none of the normals had it, but 2% of the autistic samples had that, that loss. If I click on that, this has this uh, more than one gene. And uh, I have no idea what that does. If I don't have an idea, I can click on it. and. Uh, go to NCBI and see what uh, more than one been related to. Um, and if it's something that I should be interested in or not. But um, that's one way you can proceed. Um, I can right click and say show this region in. So if I'm interested in that region, I can see it here. You can see it's a very, it's actually <laughs> just a couple of exon and the, it gets 4% versus 1.4 and 0%. So it kind of looks interesting. And, and right click on the exon track, if I could get it. Ah, this one, I'm having a hard time with this gene. Oh, it's an overlapping gene. So. I need to, so this is exon 11 and 12 of this uh, transcript um, that are being more deleted in that, in that group. Now, if I go back, if, I, if I'm curious to know if uh, other samples, so one of the beauties of having this data in Nexus DB is I can right click and say now query the database for that region. So are there, has this been seen before? Um, so now all this project that I've selected, that I've access to, that I've selected to, to search, are searched. And um, we can see that uh, in the Illumina half map set, uh, we have a high percent, 12 percent added loss at that area. So it's probably a normal variation. Um, but one, I think, nice view is this aggregate view, which gives you a summary of that loss. So if you're looking at the telomere region uh, of this chromosome 1, the, the darker it is, the more repeated losses that we have. And let me zoom in a little bit. So every sample kind of gets overlaid here. So in the agree set, the one that we're looking at here, we got some deletions. In the larger one, we also have more focal deletions. So you can look at that. You can actually, from here, if I'm now interested in the decipher, let's, let's just, uh, or let's do discuss. So if I click, there's 49 samples in this guy that have a loss at that position. If I click on the ISCA set, um, these are what the clinical interpretations were. I can go on the calls tab. And if you can see, but that, that shaded area is the actual tiny loss that we have in our case. And for ISCA, these are much larger. So, so if I sort by the size, you can see they're all much larger and they're all then pathogenic. And um, the nice part about the ISCA set now is it has good clinical annotations as well. So hopefully that, that is uh, nice information for you. But, but what um, I did this yesterday, and I thought this was interesting with this data set. So if you look, there, there's a difference between the, the, the normals and the, the autistic group. And in this case, it's 2%. If I sort on this, um, there's 12% difference between uh, them for this region on chromosome 11. That's an allelic loss. So we have more 
LOH um, or homozygosity in the autistic group uh, quite a lot more than the normal at the 16 KB region. And uh, there's one gene there. And if you click on that, it goes to this uh, gram 5 gene, which is the uh, glutamate receptor uh, gene. And for the little biology that I know, it got me a little excited because if you look at the, the involvement of this gene. So if you also get uh, excited and, and you look this up at the gram 5, you can see there's quite a number of um, publications, and then you might get want to be selective if it's been implicated in autism, and you've this publication that just apparently just came out very recently in 2012 um, talks about uh, this yeah uh, this gene, and it says interesting gram five variant. So there seems to be a SNP, um, and it says they agree. Uh, data set that uh, they talk about in, in this set. So now let's go and look at that, that region. So if I right click and say show me that region in Nexus, um, you can see that it's quite a lot more LOH. The, the parent or, or the other groups have that. And, and if I zoom out, you can see that this region is something that probably uh, comes down through you know, the generations, except as it goes out, um, the same allele is being passed on. So a hypothesis could be that uh, both parents have this defective uh, SNP there, and by chance, the, the one that's getting passed on uh, to the, the affected children are the, 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 the SNPs. So, that's it. Uh, don't take any of this, uh, this is Sohail's uh, interpretation. So uh, let me copy that region, and uh, we can go into this tab. Actually, let's go to the chromosome tab of the main window. And, uh, and I want to look at it here. Change this back to the individual. And uh, yeah, we can leave it there. Change the top to a lily. So, if you could see, I'm going to zoom out, and uh, maybe we'll change the bottom as a factor aggregate. So if I wanted to search the, the database, again, I have different tools here. I can uh, click the query tool and now ask for, uh, to search for LOH regions. And this is only going to come back with SNP arrays. And I can see that there are quite a, a large number, many of them they agree, but there's some of the, the HapMap samples that have that um, LOH region as well. So if I click on here and look at the calls for the HapMap, you can see um, how that stacks up. And most of them do seem to be more on the, on the farther right side. Um, oh, I could go on for a long time. Uh, here with the with this study, but I wanted to cover um, not the research aspect, but um, how you get clinical. So if you don't have so the query we, we've covered, um, one thing I haven't shown you. So let's say you have a copy of of Nexus, and uh, a colleague of yours who's also an Agree member does not have it. Um, or we're going to have these. We have a utility. Part of the agreement with Agree is that Agree members can have a program called uh, Nexus Solo Reader. And let me launch that. And um, this would not be um, there's uh, for free. And um, what Nexus Solo Reader allows you to do is to download a single sample uh, from the, the the repository and view that as long as you have access to it. So I'm going to, what you need to have is the, so if I wanted to look at a single sample from the repository, I need to click open and provide the sample ID. Now, where do you get that sample ID? If you're an Agree member, we're going to have this on the Secure Agree website. So you could, uh, for each of the samples, you can just get that. Um, or let me 
from, let's pick one from um, this set, for example. Ah, I picked the large one, I guess. Um, but um, one tool that we have in here is if I wanted to send somebody these samples, say, hey, look at these samples, um, I can select them and I can click email. Sorry, my email uh, application wasn't on. Um, and it's, I can email this out to somebody. So these are the, the sample IDs. And I'm going to steal one from here. So this is, let's see if I want to grab that guy. If I put that in here and say, OK, get that, I still have to have an account on Nexus DB and log in. And now it's logged in, validated that I have an account and I have access to this set. I can download that and um, and this is what you get. So um, so you have the information about the sample got downloaded and if you click view, you are able to, you cannot process, you cannot do anything, but uh, with the data, but you can look at this sample. You can say, oh, yeah, you told me about this uh, particular gain at this location, and um, you could do that. In addition, you could um, also, so if I look at this region, um, you can right-click and query that, that region in the database. So if you start with looking at a sample, and you say, yeah, that's interesting, I, I wonder if other samples and agree have this event, you could query it and it uh, issues the same type of query as, as you saw before and now it shows up all that. It shows up in lots of different uh, places. As you can see, I have access to about 45,000 samples um, over there uh, because I'm on multiple groups and they show up. So <clears throat> I think as for as much as I want to cover, I, I noticed there are some questions. So at this point, I would like to stop. We do have a lot of uh, training, uh, actually learning all the features with the Nexus could go anywhere from a day to a few days um, to cover all that. And we have other webinars that cover that. So I encourage you to sign up for those. But for now, I think I'll stop to answer some of your questions. And, and uh, maybe we can come back for more. Um, so I see. Um, one question here, and, and please feel free to start typing your your questions uh, in as well at this point. So one question is, how did you set 15% and can you change this? Um, now I have to remember. Yeah, I believe this was when you were showing the aggregate, aggregate yeah, table. I, sorry, thanks, Johnny. Yep, so let me switch over there and um, close Nexus solo. I know. Okay. Um, so that's in the result. So in the data set tab where we have all of these, when I showed all the samples, let me get all the samples. Um, the aggregate tab, where, where it's over here, you see right now this, this black bar, probably better to see, that black bar by default gets set to 35%, so anytime anything is, is 35% above or below. But at the bottom, over here it says aggregate percent cutoff, I change that to 15%, and that changed the threshold down. And you can change, actually, I can spend a little bit of time here, so this is all the events that are in at least 15% of this population, but if I'm interested in only focal regions within that, I click this peaks only value, and now it, um, it identifies regions that are the minimum overlap. So if I sort based on the frequency, I have this allelic loss that's at 75%. Um, the minimum is 15, but it can go up higher. Let, let's pick something. Uh, actually, this one on 17 might be more interesting. So if I go to that region on 17, and uh, let's sort. So I'm going to sort these samples. 
So why was it a peak? Because it's certainly higher than, than 15%. If I move out, you can see the left edge, I guess it was over here, um, goes away. So this the 65.84 was the highest peak there, next to 63, because some of these samples go off. And it keeps going down. So imagine a, a mountain like this. The 15% would start from here at that edge and continue going all the way to about here. That would be the region that's in at least 15% of the samples. When I select the peaks only, it would be just the peak common minimum region that, that shows up. So hopefully that, that was clear. Um, have, where can one request the password necessary to join the agree group on Nexus? <coughs> um, that is planned. There are two things that we're working with agree to put on the secure website, that agree for researchers website that you have access to. Um, one of that is to put this key on that website. Until that goes up there, you can contact agree or contact us and indicate that you're a member. And once we validate that, we can provide you the key so you can join. That, that group. Oh, the other thing that's going to go on the AGB website I mentioned before is the, is the IDs that we're going to put there. So I think right now um, we also have some questions for you. I appreciate getting more feedback, but maybe I will um, ask Shalini to put up our poll questions and then we can get back to answering some questions again.